John McKay's first in coach Mark Hams after this evening's 3 0 home defeat against Concord Rangers. Mark, Saturday we played relatively well. Dallas thought we got beat 1 0. Today we didn't play well at all. What went wrong this evening? Well, I mean, you said Dallas thought we did well. I thought second half we did well. Um, Saturday. What went wrong today? Um, where were, where were we strong? Where were we anywhere near being as good as or better than them? Not one department. How do you win games? Um, can you go over the top of them? Can you go around the side of them? Can you penetrate through the middle? Can you get on the end of set pieces, deliveries? Didn't even come close once. Didn't come close to winning a header, a knockdown, um, a through ball, any sort of um, intelligent passing in the right areas to break defences down. I'm just, um, it's a good question because I'm racking my brains as to as to anywhere we come close to breaking them down, mate, to be honest with you. And even, there didn't seem to be that, that fire, that drive from the players. Even Rob Tolfrey, <coughs> brilliant penalty save at 2-0. You'd think that might galvanise his kickstarters, us, but it didn't at all, did it? Were you disappointed in the reaction of the rest of the players? Yeah, I mean, I try not to use that one too much because it's, it's, there's, there's so many easy things you can say in football and, and one of them is what you haven't even tried a leg or you, you don't want to play for the club or you're not playing for your manager. And I don't even know what some of them things mean. But you do look around that tonight and, and it looked as though there wasn't any sort of passion or determination to win the game or certainly no desire not to lose it. Um, <clears throat> but I think in a nutshell, we were just beaten by a much, much better side tonight, which... Um, You've got to take your hats off to them, fair play to them. I, from, I'm led to believe they, they operate on minimal resources over there. Um, I'm not saying that we uh, uh, we operate on massive resources, but you've got to take your hat off to them. He's got a proper good side there, physically, mentally strong, and battered us all over. What do you say to the players in the dressing room after the game? Presumably you want to come down hard on them, but at the same time you don't want to shatter their confidence after two home defeats. No, yeah, days. you've just hit the nail on the head and I've just said to them that, the, um, that I was that anybody can start shouting and throwing things around and start wading into people and, and, and I was just trying my best to use, to use my human being side because um, when, you, when you've been hurt like that, when you've been smashed all over the park, the last thing you need is a, is a wally like me hollering at you and throwing things around like I say. So I just try to use my human being side and I try to do that with the supporters as well because even at 3-0 down you're still singing and I'm thinking, crap, on a freezing cold night when there's ice on the pitch. Um, Fair play to you, I've got to take me out so we couldn't do without you. Um, I've even tried to do the decent thing by finding the chap that I had the argument with at the, um, a couple of home games back and uh, where I was told I was quite rude and arrogant and, um, and I've just had to pull him and say I can't argue with a word you've got to say tonight. I'll have a pint with him at some stage over it and um, I'm just trying to be as, as human being as I can because like I say anybody can be violent and, and nasty and, and shout expletives all over the changing room. But like you say, you, you, you can't. the last thing you want to do is destroy him anymore. What did you make of the, the non-penalty decision when Sam Clayton went down? It was 2-0 at the time, arguably it wouldn't have mattered. But um, Well you, you say it wouldn't have mattered, you're going into the, to the last 15 minutes and would the keeper have been sent off and um, we'll have him back in the game I, I don't know I, for, I must admit from my angle it, it looked like he didn't touch him but that doesn't mean that my angle was correct um, I think a lot of the time that it can be covered up by the fact that the ball was well out of playing distance when the contact was made that shouldn't matter because if there's contact it's a foul um, but from my angle it looked like he didn't touch him Sam is adamant he did and so are the rest of the players and I've got no reason not to believe him but I think we, we were well out of the game by then We've, um, we've failed to score three in the last four games now, and we've lost all three of those. Um, what do you put that that lack of firepower down to recently? Um, Can you? Pick I think we've got. I'd like to think of even a shot on target tonight. To be honest with you, let alone scoring goals. Um, well, let, let's look at the logic of it. You've got uh, you've got to create a, an opportunity, an opening, um, and we need to start uh, tracing it back quite far. To be honest with you, because I'm looking to see where we're actually even coming close to breaking anything down. Um, plenty of ball being smashed forward. Um, so we're getting the ball close to their goal. Um, <clears throat> but if a team isn't offering you any space in behind, I'm not so sure you can I'm not so sure you can create anything because all you're gonna do is just stick it on the centre arms. And there are they got some units in their team tonight, some big lads who just come through everything and eat it up and clean it out. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah I think we just need to trace it back a little bit further in terms of how and where we're going to actually create an opportunity to get a shot on target um, because we don't seem to be getting in behind them. We don't seem to be getting down the sides of them with too much um, too much joy, and we're certainly not 
playing through with any intelligence and little triangles in and around the edge of the box, I, I'm, I'm as foxed as you are. We miss maybe that, that creative sort of player, and I don't want to say Dean Lodge, I don't want to rehash over old ground, but a player of, of that ilk, someone that can open up defences, we don't seem to have anyone like that in the team at the moment. Well, I'll say, if you want the team, he's missing a Dean Lodge-like player. Um, obviously, they're, they're few and far between, and, and at this stage of the season, they're tough to get. How many of them are out there, I'm not so sure. The best we can do at the moment is um, operate with the players we've got and, and try and make the sessions such that we um, we use to the best of our knowledge the, what the strengths and the weaknesses are of the opposition and, and, and try and break them down in that way. Like we, I mean, we, we last Thursday we put on a session to, to try and beat Car Shorten and they went exactly the same way that we thought they would. Um, I thought second half we were very, very much, well, there's no two ways about it, we slaughtered them second half. Um, Again, not too many uh, blatant opportunities to score goals, but um, yeah, you're right. We do miss that sort of player, but it's it's weird. It's strange. Um, it seems that the training environment um, or the mentality in training is 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 not carried into games because I see some great stuff in training. I'm not just giving you lip service. I mean, it'd be nice if we could have lots of people down there watching training sometimes just to see that we're not lying to you and to see so that you can see the logic of how the lads get in the team because some of it's excellent it really is and it, it foxes me how it, how, it, um, how it can't be carried into games and I've got to look at myself as well because I'm, I'm responsible for taking a lot of the sessions and um, do I need to sort of make changes here and there and up the tempo of sessions or I don't know I've got to look at myself as much as the players have got to look at themselves. Despite these results of the last two games, obviously disappointing but the league being the way it is it's so tight everywhere throughout the league that we're we're too good at results again from being right back in the mix. So you, you can't get too down over that, surely? No, exactly right. We're, um, if my maths is correct, I think there's another 51 points to play for, um, depending on how many games we've got left. So, um, yeah, there's plenty to play for. And this, like you say, this league, is, I don't believe it when people say, oh, at this level, well, at any level, um, anything can happen in any league on any given day in any country. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 there's a chance we could go on a good run. There's a chance four or five other teams could go on an excellent run. I mean, Tunbridge are doing pretty much what they did last year, where they're finishing the season quite strong. Um, why can't we do it? Uh, it's just a case of turning the corner. See, I don't understand that we can go through the, um, the the few games that we had where we which started at Okay, it was only three games, but it was three games undefeated, considering we've been for a rocky spell. And I don't know how you can come out the other side of that lacking confidence because there, there were three good results, especially the, I mean, particularly the Berry game when you go down to ten men and you got to dig in for half an hour. Um, <coughs> so, uh, yeah, um, lacking a bit of confidence around the place and uh, this is where we've got to earn our corn. He's done it before, the manager, he's good enough to do it again. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Simon. Appreciate it. Thank you, mate. Cheers.